How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of homebrew. Again, I say this every time, doesn't look like it. In a form of Everett Brewhouse, it's their Veriti Vupus. Yes, this is the uh, the plum and cardamom version, 8.81%, or 8.8%, sorry. Uh, this was bottled in December 9th, 2020. So you're talking about two months old. And I, this literally just dawned on me in that, um, you know, uh, Tyler uh, sent off a ton of these um, homebrews. There are like six or seven or eight of them in there. And I've been kind of joking about how professional they are. Not joking, really. I mean, from the bottle to the capping to the labels, they all look really, really nice. But I always kind of laughed about the government warning. I'm like, all of them have government warnings on it, yada, yada, yada. Let me read the government warning. I actually haven't read one till now. Uh, the government warning here says, um, I'm not the government, so I don't give a care. Consumption of alcoholic beverages impairs your ability to drive a car or operate machinery, but dramatically improves your dance moves. So have Adam. Adder. Jagger. Uh, so, yeah, I like that even more. So, there you go. I need a bottle opener. I don't know where mine went. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. We can always use a bottle opener. We can always makeshift one. Where did I put my bottle opener? It's weird. Let's see if we got any old cubbies. I bet you, bet you guys didn't know we had a little cubby hole down here with all kinds of bits and pieces. So let's do... If I wasn't inside my house right now, I would saber this. Just for fun skis, but I am not. So we are going to use... Should I use these? Oh, okay. No, I don't want to use it. That's disgusting. I was about to use a... Uh, a tail and toenail clipper to uh, to do a, a bottle opening thing. So we'll just use these uh, scissors to open this up. There we go. For all you know, I cut my toenails with scissors. So who knows? Anyway, <laughs> let's dive in. Oh, this beer review is coming off awesome already. Um, so yeah, homebrew jammers. Um, this is got a ton of particulate in it because I'm tossing it around like a dum dum. And it is, like I said, plum, which is one of my favorite things to go to farmhouse sales, and cardamom, which is kind of like a, almost a given when it comes to a lot of farmhouse sales, at least from a yeast ester. So we'll see how that plays, um, see if it's too heavy-handed, adding cardamom on top of that. Um, the last one I did, which is in the same kind of series, um, was the dry hopped version of this beer. I believe it's the same one. I could be wrong. What does that look like? Looks like a farmer's sale, but you can get where that kind of plummy this has kind of affected the color of the beer. It's not like that kind of purpley plumminess, but once you add that plum to it, it's kind of taking this beer from a lighter kind of hazy yellow to a little bit more vibrant orange. And uh, head dissipated really quickly, you know, addition of fruit, sour beer, a little bit of cardamom, not that out of the ordinary. Let's just dive into the nose. I mean, cardamom's really big on this. Um, not in a bad way so far. I like the way it's coming off in the nose. It's vibrant. It's leader in the clubhouse, but there is this really nice kind of fruitiness behind it. I'm not going to say it's all plum, but I think it's a yeast ester in the beer itself that comes off at least plum adjacent. And then when you add the plum to it, it just kind of amplifies that. So the cardamom and the... Plum are kind of working in concert, so they don't smell like singular entities. They kind of smell like their own kind of cohesive blend. But it is quite vibrant, very perfume-like, let's put it that way. Not like in the caustic kind of walking through Macy's kind of perfume-like, but very vibrant, very amplified. So I'm curious to see where the beer lands in this one, because while I do get some sweet malts, and I'm not getting much as far as bittering from any kind of hops and stuff like that. I wonder if the beer is going to kind of hold up. Let's just find out. Cheers. Okay. It's quite tasty. The cardamom is very heavy. I don't hate it. It's not too heavy to where I don't want to drink this beer. But I think just walking that cardamom back a little bit would make this beer pop um, because all the other flavors are there you're getting that plum here in spades which is actually beautiful because I know it's such a hard fruit to impart in a beer um, and have it show up 
especially an 8.8% beer, to have that plum show up and be so meaningful, even with that cardamom kind of being relatively heavy-handed, is pretty impressive stuff. Carbonation is beautiful. Mouth feels beautiful. It finishes dry. So you get the cardamom for me comes off as almost as like a, a sweetener in this beer. I'm sure there's other things that play there, but the way the car cardamom plays with the sweetness, they kind of they're cohesive. They're one, so it comes off as like a sweetener, which makes this beer relatively sweet, but it finishes pretty dry. It has a lingering sweetness on it, but it finishes poof, this like this dry, nice dryness there, almost like it hit some wood at some point. So that's quite nice. I like this. I'm not sitting, going to sit here and say that Carbone ruins it for me. It is just a bit too aggressive to let the other parts of the beer talk. And that's it. It's not so much like I'm going to sit here and say, oh, this is this beer is just ruined by the level of Carbone here. But it's like, you know, if you're you're in a group of people, you know, you're with a group of friends and you're sitting in the back corner of, I was going to say a bar, but we don't do that nowadays in COVID times. You know, you're sitting in a group, yada, yada, whatever. And everybody's just sitting around having a beautiful conversation. And one of your friends shows up and he's a friend you love. You love him or her or them. It doesn't matter. Um, but they're the life of the party person. And they're loud. So you love them. You like them. You'll love hanging out with them because they always make the night fun. But sometimes you just want to sit around and just, you know, have a group conversation and kind of go back and forth. And it's that person that's just, you know, speaking three, four octaves louder, being louder, louder, louder. So everybody else is like, ah, I can't have my conversation. I can't sit like this is this is not what I want to do tonight. I just want to kind of lay back and relax. That's the kind of vibe. I'm getting off it. So definitely not a negative beer by any stretch. It's tasty stuff. There's nothing as far as negative as far as off flavor or anything like that. It's just the cardamom here is just a little bit too big for me. I can see a lot of people um, thinking the cardamom in this is very much kind of like what's the other, what's the um, what's the thing that people th cilantro people like soap cilantro just tastes like soap to them. I could see this level of cardamom coming off very very soapy for a lot of people. Um, it doesn't come off that way for me, but I could see people thinking that. But you keep this beer exactly where it's at. And you just cut, you push back that cardamom. And I think this evens out and opens up and lets those other voices through. And so ends up being a bit more of a complex and well-balanced beer. But still tasty stuff, man. Really digging it. Loving what's thrown down. But it's probably, you know, what am I, this is the third one or fourth one I've done for me. And this is, <laughs> not excitedly, but this is the first time I've found, like, Something that I personally would be like, yeah, that's not, I wish that was different, um, which is a pretty good percentage. Uh, so I wouldn't get too, uh, too bummed out over that one, but yeah, yeah. Tasty beer nonetheless. And I like how it comes off. I mean, if you gave this to me again, I think I said this before, I rarely try to, or really want to kind of associate these beers with commercial beers. But if I get this from a commercial brewery, I'm a okay with everything I'm getting right now. More than a okay. Pretty happy. So there you go a little bit of homebrew in the books like i said if you want to go check out everett brew house just go on to the old instagrams type it in and you'll find them if you can't find them let me know and then i will uh i will let you know how to find them so there you go if you want to send off homebrew you're born welcome matt at massivebeers.com or massivebeers at gmail.com if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff uh it's a massive beers type that in the gooks uh, beer massif if you want to see me doing podcasting things hopefully you guys enjoyed our review hopefully enjoying a little bit of homebrew right now We'll see you next time. Cheers.